Hey, everybody. So here I am with Dave Williams or I Dave Williams. <laughs> I Dave Williams is fine. Dave Williams, yep. Hi. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, good. Thank you. How are you? Cool. Good. Things are good. Hang so, on a second. What's that over already? your What's that over your left shoulder on the shelf? That this? glass looking thing. That? The other way. The other oh, way. Yeah. Down on the bottom shelf. What is that? Oh, thank you. What? A guru award. A guru award? Right against the dark. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Kelby won. Oh, nice. Photoshop World for Photoshop artistry. Thank you. That's Congratulations. Fun. Quite a yeah, prestigious award to have there. Yeah, it's cool. Good, good. And uh, let's see, we have, uh, just to remind everyone to let us know where you are watching from. Welcome, everybody. we got some comments coming in. So, uh, Shall I tell you where I am? Because you're in, you're in California, right? Right. So I'm in Los Angeles, and you are in the UK. I'm, where... Yeah, I'm, I'm just outside London, um, about 30 minutes west of London. Cool. And about seven, eight hours away from you, eight hours time difference. So That's I'd be interested right. to see where everyone else is and where everyone else is living and from. Right. So we have Andrew Nichols, who's also in the UK. Hi, Andrew. Uh, someone from... The Netherlands. We got uh, Stephen, Stephen Gotts from Prescott, Arizona. I know him. And nice um, guy. Let me just remind everybody so we can give you credit when you uh, comment or ask questions. Please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pics so I can give you credit when you comment, ask questions. That is the link right underneath the live, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Just click on that, give permissions. You might have to go back into the group. Uh, but um, do that, and then we can see who is commenting. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. Someone from Napa Valley, California. Napa Valley, down the road from you. And then we got Osvaldo, who's in Los Angeles as well. One of my uh, Good operators. evening, Osvaldo. Thanks for being here, Osvaldo. Cool. So, yes. So, uh, let us know where everyone is watching from. And... Uh, while we wait for uh, more people to come into the live, let me give a little shout out to StreamYard. So StreamYard makes all this possible. StreamYard. Yeah. Stream, live yeah. streaming, multi-streaming to the different <laughs> platforms. So here's a little intro video, yeah. Thanks, StreamYard. So, yep. <laughs> Thanks, StreamYard. Yeah, it's I, I love it. It's a great place. It's pretty. I'm looking. So, I've done Zooms and I've done Skypes, and looking at this from the other side. Yeah. Um, from you know my interface of what's going on here, this is so simple, so easy, very intuitive. I can see everything. It's cool. I like it. Go StreamYard. Like this, you know, like <laughs> giving credit to uh, Kirsten Lutz from West London. Kirsten Lutz. He just did some uh, portraits of me. He's an awesome photographer. Bob Stein from San Mateo, California. Hi, good to see good you. Good evening, Rob. Rob. Bob, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Bob, Rob, Bob. Uh, says, when I tried to log in, streamer said it was sending a code, but I haven't gotten it. You're in, though. Hopefully, you're not trying to join us here live in the room. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as Valdo says, he's jealous everyone has the Photoshop pillow. So oh. You hold yours up there. You have to. Um, what happened to your? How come you don't have your name? My name's gone. Um, oh, you have I, to. I yeah, if you if okay. you there if you is. do something nice for Adobe or do one of their feedback things or I don't know any. There's there's lots of ways to get one. Yeah, that's um, good. You just have to wait for the right opportunity, or I say wait for the right opportunity. You can Hi. create your own lock and go for the right opportunity, can't you? Timing you is one. essential, right? Exactly. They do InDesign. They do Illustrator. There's loads of pillows. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, let me watch comments. All right, so it's about uh, five minutes in. People are coming in pretty good. So um, you want to uh, introduce yourself, Dave? And, uh, yeah, sure. Um, good evening. Hi, I'm Dave Williams. Um, I'm a travel photographer. Uh, I'm in the UK. I'm from the UK. And um, the reason I'm here with you going live this evening or this afternoon, depending on where you are, 
is because I've made quite a radical change to my life and I've um, decided to build out a van which I now live in and I want to go into all the reason and all the rationale behind why I've done that and how I've done that um, but let's yeah let's introduce me properly I'm a travel photographer and writer and educator so I'm a Kelby One instructor Photoshop world instructor I write for Photoshop user magazine um, I've just written a book for expertphotography.com about travel photography. Um, I work closely with lots of brands. Um, I'm an Adobe uh, influencer, that's the word. Um, I, I just do lots of different things, all centered around travel photography and showing you how to do travel photography. So yeah, that's who I am. Um, you can find me at idavewilliams.com or idavewilliams on um, Instagram, facebook.com slash idavewilliams. Uh, yeah, that pretty much sums it up, I think. Um, did I miss anything? No, that's good. So I'm just posting <laughs> cool. your idavewilliams.com banner. Oh, fabulous. Just reminding everyone, find Dave on all social networks up. as idavewilliams. Idavewilliams. Very good. And uh, did you want to uh, jump into the screen share? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, right. Here, okay, okay, cool. Let me go. Right there. I hit yeah. that button. There we go. There is a picture of me in Iceland. Nice. Um, standing behind or standing in front rather of Hulfos, which a lot of people will pronounce Goldfoss because that's the way it's spelled. And it is the largest, it's not the largest, it's the most powerful waterfall in Iceland. And Iceland is my favorite place in the world. So when I, and this isn't a black rapid advert, by the way, that I just happened to have that strap on um, at the time. So yeah, the, um, the country, the whole of Iceland is my favorite place in the world. I know usually the favorite place is narrowed down quite specifically, but Iceland is my favorite place in the world. And throughout this whole global pandemic, this mess that we found ourselves in, um, whoever's to blame or whatever the cause, I have not been able to travel properly. And so that's why I built the van. The van there, um, the logo for the van is there. It's Coffee Fernve. Coffee Fernve if you wanted to learn how to pronounce it, but I know it's difficult to pronounce. I'm going to jump to another picture, but I know it's difficult to pronounce and it's intentionally that way. Uh, it's not meant to be memorable. Obviously you're meant to recognize it, um, but it's a mix of German and Icelandic and it means the cabin with a desire to travel. So if you're able to look at the next picture, Andrew, um, the logo is right there, Coffee Fernvey. And it includes um, a whole bunch of design elements. Basically, what happened here is I can't design for toffee. I have no idea when it comes to design. Um, I know I, I can get a vision in my head, but I can't put it down. I can't make it happen. So um, I had a designer do this for me, who's not far from you in California, Kimberly Richardson, nice. who is White Seal Graphics um, on Instagram. I said to her, because um, we've, we've been in touch for a while and we were in discussions about a book, my Northern Lights book, and she said, oh, it's a really good book. The content's great, but we need to fix the design. I was like, right, okay. Cool. So she said she'll do me a logo. So Kofi, K-O-F-I, that is cabin in Icelandic. So I said Iceland is my favorite place in the world. There's the Icelandic element. And this is a Mercedes Sprinter, Mercedes Benz, a Mercedes Benz. And Fernve is German for wanderlust so if you smash the two together which i've done to create and invent this new word it's the cabin with a desire to travel and i i knew i wanted camera compass um i knew i wanted the icelandic ruins in there i knew i wanted mountains and she made it work perfectly the first oh, time good. so that's um that's the identity i'm going to show another picture in a second but before cool. i get to the next picture the um thank you the um presentation i'm doing is more of a discussion and i would love at any point for you to write your questions down in the chat it can be about travel photography social media northern lights the van anything you want to ask about anything i say or don't say please feel free to stick it in the comments in the chat and andrew's going to just butt in and ask them to me because this is a conversation i want this right. to be interactive so this photo um now this is the whole this is the whole thing about COVID and the van. This is me in Venice. Um, you see the mask, uh, despite being outdoors on a rooftop. Um, you can see the Grand Canal of Venice just below the lens there. Um, and 
just down in front of me is the Rialto Bridge, the big famous bridge with the buildings on it. This photo was taken in October 2020. It's been 11 months since I've been anywhere outside of the UK. And that is a massive shock for me because I was traveling twice a month, um, every month for a few years until this happened, till this pandemic, and it stopped me. And it made me realize that one of the, or it reminded me rather, that one of the reasons I got into travel photography is because I love to travel. I have this desire to travel and see things and show the world the way I see it. And so being on a rooftop in Venice and then not being able to go anywhere after that, and now being grounded for nearly a year, 11 months, um, that's where the van came about. And so in five months i managed to get everything designed and put together and it's there's a there's a phrase they say in the van life community which is built not bought so i built this van i didn't buy a van that was converted already i built i, I bought a mercedes sprinter it was stripped naked on the inside and i put everything in the way i wanted it down to every detail like the europe map on the wall there which um, shows me where i'm going to be driving to i'm going to be going up here for christmas into lapland norway sweden and finland Every single detail in this thing was designed by me and made my made by me. Um, can so, you, yeah. uh, Dave? Can you take a couple questions uh, now? Yeah, or? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this picture, but yes, I can. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, Bob says, and I guess you don't really have to show it because you might have to move your whole computer around or laptop, but um, maybe you could talk about it. He says he would love to see how you set up your computer equipment in the van and how you power it. So maybe you could just kind of describe that. Okay. Um, I'm going to, if you look on my screen now, you can see the Instagram account for yep. the van. Right. The van has its own Instagram. And I'm hoping somewhere in here, there we go. So where I'm sitting now, um, I, so that view is facing that way, sat right here. So I can, there's a table that mounts right beside me. Uh, and I can detach it. I can move it around. It's on an L bracket. It's um, a Lagoon table, L-A-G-U-N, for anyone that's interested in this sort of stuff. Um, and that's that's the setup. I, I have a laptop because I don't need anything fancy. I don't want a, uh, a mount or fixed um, desktop computer in here for security reasons and various other things. I just I, I just want it the way it is. So. I can sit over here, I can sit here, uh, I can sit anywhere I want, I can take it outside, it's just a laptop. In terms of power, um, if you, I'm gonna show you another picture now from the folder. Um, let's I just followed you on Instagram. With, oh, thank you very much, plus one. So here is a picture of me from a drone in the van. Cool. And it shows you my primary power source. So if you have a look at the top there, mm just here solar panel three yep yeah, 385 watts worth of solar smart and it is very good at pulling power out of practically nothing so when there's overcast cloudy days it's still churning power and it pumps it straight through into a um into a little box i have just over here at the end of the of the couch to a solar charge controller an mppt which puts it into the batteries and the batteries are lithium ion and I have 200 amp hours worth at the moment, which I find is plenty. Um, it also goes through an inverter, uh, 1800 watt inverter. So I can run AC or just from the batteries, I can run DC. So I've got options there. I'm gonna just show you another picture um, just to show the plan view of the van. Same day, same place, same drone. Um, there's the solar panel. So it takes up half of the roof. This is a, in American, it's called a 170. This sprinter is the 170. In Europe, it's called the L3H2. And it's basically, it's the long wheelbase with the high roof. So I can stand up without hitting my head on the ceiling. And it's long enough that there's a double bed right there. Um, and this window here is directly above the double bed. So the bed takes up this area here. And then I'm sat about here next to the window, right there. Um, so that, yeah, that solar panel um, is the primary power source, but everything you do, as I've learned in van life, everything you do needs redundancies. You need a second method of, of doing anything. So the if that fails, or if there's not enough sunlight, or whatever it may be, the second power source is um, 
from the engine. So from the alternator, it runs through and charges the batteries, just like it charges the regular battery. And to do that, there's a split charge relay, which is all very boring electrical stuff, but there's a split charge relay, which figures out the voltage of the main battery. Once that battery's got enough, it goes to my house batteries, my leisure batteries, which are the 200 amp hour lithium batteries I'd said that are in the back. So that is how I power everything. There is plenty of power. In fact, I've got one more picture to show how much power this thing can create. I was on a podcast not very long ago, and here is another drone shot where you can see um, the van, myself there in the middle with the hosts either side of me and all their equipment and their lighting and the computers and the sound equipment and the camera, everything, every single thing required for that podcast, which took two hours to run and did next to nothing to my batteries was run from the van. Excellent. So just, just down here, this wire here, that's running out of the window and then plugs in. So there is loads of power. And that's how I charge my, that's how I run and charge my computer and my camera gear. Great. And that was uh, a question, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. Excellent. <laughs> if I remember back all that talking I just did, I think that was the question. Yeah, that's Bob's question. He says, thanks. And then now. You're uh, welcome. Stephen has a kind of interrelated question. He asks, um, I get that there are places to hook up an RV or in this case, a van out where yes. people like to camp. But what yes. about when you're in uh, cities or big cities? Okay. Um, I don't hook up. I am completely off grid. So I have th the power comes from the engine and the solar, like I just said. Um, I have a water tank, which is on the inside of the van. So it doesn't freeze over in the, in the winter because my plans are to go, as I said, up to the Arctic Circle. Um, so I'm completely off grid. I don't need to rely on anything. I just need to keep putting diesel in the tank. Um, so when I'm in when I'm in the in the city, um, it because the van's branded, um, everything about it says this is a van that you know either someone lives in or is commercial. It looks that way. Um, it's got the logo on the outside. It's got all the lights. There's, there's no hiding. Like some people do stealth camping. There's no hiding what's going on here. This is this is the van that I use for work. And if you know if you know what you're looking for in a van to live in, but it is green though, so you can camouflage. Yeah. So <laughs> if you can see that. In fact, I'm going to show you another picture that makes that exact point. The reason I painted it green is because I wanted that. I wanted to make sure that if I take a photo of the van or a photo or the van's in a photo, it's deliberately in the photo. Um, and if it's sort of in the way, it generally, because of the kind of photography I do, will blend in. So right. it's green to camouflage it, but also so that if I take a photo of it, it you, you know it's deliberate. I've taken a photo of it on purpose. It's that kind of... Um, half hiding, hiding in plain sight kind of rationale behind why it's a green van. Right. Um, and, so, yeah. And then Stephen has another question, kind of more personal question, but um, okay. water and sewage, how long can you go without a hookup for something like okay. that? Okay. Um, so I have the fresh water, um, which lasts me about four days, and I have the waste tank for that, which I can empty into a into pretty much any drain, um, storm drain or roadside drain. And the reason I can empty it into that is because I don't put any chemicals in it. Um, all the washing up and stuff that I do is um, biological stuff or organic. It, there's no chemicals in any of that. Um, so that's the gray water that they, in the business we call it gray water, goes down the drain. Um, the black water, which is the disgusting side of things that the other side of that question um i can probably last about the same about four days maybe a week at a push before i empty that and obviously that has to go into a chemical disposal point um l right. sand point or a you know a black waste point which you find at campsites or service stations so that uh, it's about a week for that one about four days before i have to fill up the fresh water though so that's the important one the fresh water four days Great. Excellent. And you can get water anywhere as well. You, there's loads of places to get water. I won't go into what's what's um, allowed and what's sure. ethical, but there's loads of places to get water. Great. Okay, great. Did you want to jump back to some other uh, images? Yeah, I mean, um, where were we? Let's see. So, ah, uh, yeah. So um, 
the if I go back to this shot of the Instagram, um, one of the things I'm going to be doing, as I said, is going towards um, Iceland, Norway, um, north, basically, um, for Christmas and for the winter, because that is my passion. The, the cold mountains, northern lights, that sort of thing. So I'm going to be filming what I do, and I'm going to be setting it out on YouTube on a series under the name of Due North, um, off-grid guiding my own tour. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, that's what I'm going to be doing here. The whole plan with the van is to get north for the winter and, and experience the cold and see what the snowstorms are like and see what the ice is like and see the extremes that I can put this van through and, and myself. But obviously I've done it before and I've done it with rental cars and in hotels, Airbnbs and all that sort of stuff. And the great thing about the van and part of the reason I've done the van is because I don't have to be constrained by hotels, Airbnbs, or rental cars, or timings, or flights, or any of that stuff. If if I was going to Little Photon Islands before, I'd be there for perhaps a week. And if there was bad weather for six days, I'd have that one day to, to do anything with. And so all that money on the flights and the hotels and everything else was basically a waste if that were the case. Whereas now, I don't need to pay for flights. I don't need to pay for accommodation. I don't need to pay for a rental car because this is the car. This is the accommodation and it is getting me out of the country to the other country. So all those expenses are gone, which has changed the business model quite dramatically. And it's changed the amount of money I'd be able to use and make from the photography. Um, it, to, it's taken it to a whole different level, to be quite honest. Great. Um, so yeah, due north is going to be the journey of of that all happening. It's going to be the um, the rationale behind everything. There'll be some photography tips in there. I'm going to show you what I learn about photography and about van life along the way. But I'm also going to show you the adventures and things I get up to. And in preparation, I'm going to show you another picture. In preparation, I've been going around the UK. Um, this is me. Here we go. This is me yesterday. Um, in Wales, so that's the true the, size of that thing. Uh, yeah, look at how big is that cow? Oh, <laughs> it's like, like seven or eight of you, or something, right? I mean, it's yeah, I mean, it's all about perspective, obviously, but yeah, we'll yeah. go with that. It's a massive cow. Um, one of the things I think is very, very important to photographers is personal projects, and and the reason is no matter what style of photography you do. Personal projects will keep you on your toes. They'll keep you learning new skills. And quite often those skills will translate from whatever it is to whatever you do. So if I show you another picture, the reason I was parked on this hillside in Wales is because I decided with a friend that we were going to go and take photos of planes at this place called the Mac Loop. And obviously plane photography is not what I do. I, I shoot travel photography. I shoot photos that make you want to be somewhere, that go in brochures and magazines and on websites things like that so this photo of a plane is not going to make you want to go there it's not it's not a travel photo but it's a personal project and i'm interested in planes i'm a bit of a geek um and so we went my friend john and i to this hillside in wales where they do low flying training this is an f-15 so obviously the americans uh, use it as well as the british in wales um from RAF lakenheath which is one of the uh, u.s air force divisional bases um they fly through this gap in the in the hills um, down the valley. It's called the Mac Loop. It's just a big circuit of low flying. So personal projects are, are massive because taking these skills of panning and reacting fast and changing settings very, very fast based on the lighting and going in and out of shadows, in and out of clouds, what the background is, whether it's got propellers, if you want to blur the propellers, there's all these things from this personal project that translate and make me quicker when it comes to travel photography. So personal projects are a huge thing if you're an established photographer to keep you on your toes and to keep your skills up. And if you aren't established, if you haven't found out what your niche is yet, this is a way to find your niche. Try everything, try everything out. Go take some pictures of planes, do flowers, do animals, do mountains and landscapes. Try everything, do these personal projects to figure out either what you like or to keep you ahead of the game i think i might have another picture for this point let me just have, have a quick some, check. some uh, questions too yeah so, go on 
let's see. Uh, first one is uh, Andrew, Andrew Nichols from the UK. He's saying, is the van insulated? So, I mean, uh, yes, it is insulated. Um, I would imagine <clears throat> you have to be, right? So, yeah, let me find something for this. So, um, I can deal with any weather. Um, so in terms of the insulation, there is 50 mil of insulation all the way around. Um, so I had to strip the floor, strip the wall, strip the ceiling, and there's 50 mil of insulation. If I quickly flick from, so this is obviously, this is the van dealing with all weather. In fact, quickly, the reason I show this picture is because it can deal with the terrain and everything. It's not a four by four, but it has, um, all weather uh, all-terrain tires very big all-weather all-terrain tires that can deal with everything including ice and snow and this is going up uh, a very wet muddy horrible hillside with no problem at all if you're interested the term for a, something that's not a four by four that has perhaps the capabilities or qualities of a four by four is a swamper just uh, yeah. now now you know um but if we go to my instagram for coffee fernway you can see way way down the insulation okay here we go so oh, yeah. on the floor on the floor is um foam um fixed foam what's it called hard foam whatever that's called sure <laughs> and that's that's 50 mil and it's on the ceiling on a lot of the walls and on the floor and in all the gaps this is recycled glass um insulation um and i made sure it's the stuff that doesn't gather water and soak water in and then you can see underneath it as well to plug the gaps that i still couldn't get into there's expanding foam so this so that specific spot is under where i'm sitting where the bench sheet is and that is all the way around the van there's insulation everywhere and then the blind behind me is an insulated blackout blind the one on the other side is the same the skylight is also blackout and insulated so as i've done everything i possibly can to keep myself warm in this thing um and i think i think it's going to work but i'll let you know <laughs> in december and january you'll find out for sure whether i'm warm or not but i think it's a i think i've done a pretty good job with the insulation great and then uh let's see uh, andrew says uh, if you ever feel like roughing it come up to stoke on trent I drove I drove past Stoke on Trent today. So I woke up in Wales um by the Mac Loop. Um and it's the Mac Loop, if you're interested, it's not called Mac because of Edward Mac, the guy who discovered the speed of sound. It's called Mac because of the Welsh town nearby that no one can pronounce. It's a long word beginning with Mac. It's something like McKintleff. <laughs> McKintley, something like that. Anyway, I woke up there 180 miles away and drove past Stoke on Trent to get to where I am right now. So yeah. I, I i was in stoke on trent today nearly <laughs> and then i uh, see a uh, comment by dave dave ellison says i saw the van in the lay-by at bellwich yeah bellwich. where you park for the mock loop on wednesday morning sounds like a oh, lot wow. of the uk terminology there oh that's cool yeah bellwich is the town near the mac loop the next town to the it's Mock the next town Lynch. the other way to yeah, exactly that thing. <laughs> it's the next. But how town. you spell? Uh, how you pronounce it? McIntlech, McIntlech, okay. something like that. Uh, Irish. A, they make funny with a double L. It's not Irish. Something like that. It's it's probably got a Gaelic origin, but I don't know for sure. So don't quote me on it. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah I saw the van in the layby though. That's pretty cool. Did, I mean, I'm yeah. happy that people are recognizing it. That's very good. And then uh, Bob was asking, what's the Instagram account? So I want to have the Instagram it. account for the van is so there. It's, that's how you say it, right? K O F I F E R N W E H, correct? Exactly. It's Coffee Fenway. And as I said at the beginning, it's not designed or, or thought up to be pronounceable. That's not the point of right. it. It's just that's just the name of the van. That's just the identity. If you go to mine, um, I Dave Williams, which you see there in the description, just like this says driver, I Dave Williams. If you go to I Dave Williams, it will say driver of Coffee Fanve. So there we go. Mm. So if you go to I Dave Williams, because that's far more memorable, you'll be able to find the van. Great. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
was there a question or shall I go further on? Yeah, you can proceed. Yeah, great. Okay, so I've got a um, – what have I got here? Oh, if anyone was at the photography show in um, Birmingham at the NEC the other day, I was. I had three classes there. Um, this one was on the editing and post-production suite, which was all about photography for Instagram. And then I had uh, two in the Masterclass Theatre, which were Shoot for Love, Work for Money, which is all about the business of photography and going pro in photography. So if anyone here was there and is watching this now, uh, thank you for coming to the classes. It was good to have such a great audience there. And this gave me so much hope and inspiration that I'm doing the right thing, that after COVID, with everything starting to go back to normal and I say normal, relatively normal, um, away from um, restrictions on gatherings and travel and everything like that. It's it's building me up for uh, the big go date. And the go date when I leave the country is November the 8th. Um, between now and then, I'll be doing a lot of the getting ready. I'll be going to Scotland. Um, I'm going to be getting the van serviced and get the MOT done. The MOT, if you're not familiar, is like a vehicle test. I'm sure you have that wherever you are in the world. So the, the, it'll give it another year's worth of roadworthiness um can i ask um some questions since we're at this please slide? do so go for, on i'm going to show the other one though there we go there's the so other for, class for editing and and post-production do you prefer lightroom or are you a camera raw user or do you jump back and forth back and forth completely back and forth um camera raw and lightroom have so many overlaps um, although there are unique things about each, they have so many overlaps that um, it depends on what I'm up to, how fast I want to go, whether I'm doing it for the catalogue, whether I want it saved and backed up. There, there's lots of different reasons. And it also, I, I write so many tutorials for magazines and websites that um, whatever the tutorial demands is the thing I'll use. So, yeah, I'm backwards and forwards all the time. I, don't, I think if I had to say which one I prefer, um, I prefer using Camera Raw and Photoshop. There's the answer. I mean, sure. there's, I mean obviously, there's, Lightroom there's pros organizes and cons. nicely. Lightroom organizes yeah. nicely, but my file management is crazy hot. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, right. What have we got? Oh, here's uh, so some of the preparation I've been doing for the big uh, departure day is. Um, just taking the van to as many different kinds of places as possible. So where the with the podcast picture that we saw before, that was uh, that was basically an off road place. Um, stayed there overnight for two nights, but it's an off road place, and we were going up steep, sort of thirty to forty degrees, very very steep inclines. There was mud, there was grass, there was gravel, um, there was some twisty turny bits through the woods. It was that was testing whether the van was capable of doing that and i'm very happy that it is and so i took it to the beach to see what it was like on the sand as well so this is um this is legal by the way you are allowed to drive on this beach this is black rock sands in wales and this was two days ago and so um i've been putting everything through its paces in uh, in the most exciting way i possibly can by having fun and getting out there but just throwing things into the mix so I'm waiting now for a bit of snow and ice, which is part of the reason why I'm going to Scotland. I might be able to get some in the mountains um, to test that everything works the way it should work because I don't want to get from here to here, which is, mm, I'm going to say, I'm going to estimate four to four and a half thousand miles, which is probably 6,000 to six and a half thousand kilometers. I don't want to get all that way to find out that the wheels aren't good enough or that um, I needed, I don't know, there's a screw missing somewhere, whatever it may be. I, I want to make sure everything works perfectly so that I can make the most of this adventure and share the adventure with you and show you everything that's going on. So, so well, yeah, that's Black Rock Sands, if anyone's interested. If anyone's in the UK, Black Rock Sands, they charge you five pounds to drive on the beach. It's, it's awesome. So Dave, Dave Ellison says that there are great caves at Black Rock Sands. There are. I'm going to show you another picture. And then uh, Bob has a question that is exactly the question I was going to ask, which is, do you ever get stuck when you're off-road? Um, so far, I have not. So there's there's a cave at Black Rock Sands um, to cool. demonstrate. Was it Dave? Dave's point. Yeah, Dave Ellison. Yeah. Uh, and the question, have I ever got stuck? 
Hmm. Bob. So far, Bob says, uh, Bob says, have I got stuck? No. So far, I have not. Nice. And, and I... Is there any wood in your van you can knock on, right? Well, that's the thing. There's, <laughs> I've got methods. I haven't got um, like a, a... What's it called? What's the thing at the front of a 4x4? Four four? I haven't got one of those. But okay. I've got other things. So I've got this thing called a Max Track. So it's these two big plates um, with loads of grip and you shove them under your tire if you do get sure. stuck. Um, and then I've got ropes and various things in the back there. I've got so many things to help me if I need it, shovels, all that stuff in case I get stuck, but so far I haven't. Um, and it's, yeah. that's a lot to do with knowing not only your capabilities as a driver, but the capabilities of the vehicle. Um, so you just, if you think you're going to get stuck, just don't go into it unless you're going off roading and you've got all the stuff with you to save you right. you need to just know what your limits are what your vehicle's limits are so that you don't get stuck because okay. i've i have been stuck don't tell any don't tell anyone this andrew uh, in the far north of norway in the snow the northern lights came out and i pulled over to the side of the road got these awesome pictures of the northern lights and then when i got back in the car i it wasn't going anywhere and it cost me 600 pounds which is what 800 dollars more like probably a thousand to 1200 yeah okay well it cost me that much money to get pulled out of the snow wow don't tell anyone <laughs> so if you know if you know you're living going you everywhere you're... so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that never to ever do that don't don't get yourself in a situation where you need to be rescued and as far as you possibly can and not just in terms of driving but in terms of any travel photography stuff if you're a travel photographer and you're walking up a mountain or anything like that know your limits and your capabilities and also give yourself as much um knowledge and gear as you can to self-rescue like right. don't carry unnecessary stuff but you need to be able to self-rescue right and uh dave dave ellison says uh that Led Zeppelin recorded a video, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, at Ab Aberlefini. Aberlefini. By the Mock Loop when the levee breaks. That's a great song. Oh, was that there? That's, yeah, that's um, great. yeah, that's cool. Um, it's a great place to go. If you're if you're in the area, if you're interested in planes, or if you're in the area, it's a great place to go. If you're in the in the states, though. I think it's Arizona. I think there's a place mm. called Star Wars Valley. I think it's called Star Wars Valley. I think someone someone in the chat must know the answer if I'm right or not. Where they did the filming. But it's it's where they it's where the American um, the the U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, and whoever else in America. It's where they do their low flying training. Okay. So it's the same. It's the same thing, but in the states. But it's desert hills. Um, cool. So yeah, you can you can if you're a plane geek, you can do it there as well. Nice. Um, so one of the things about um, going to the north and, and going to the Arctic Circle is my passion, as I said, for the cold and the mountains and those landscapes, but also for the Northern Lights, and uh, that's why this, one of the first places I'm going to go is the Faroe Islands, and then the second place I'm going to go is Iceland. So I'm going to leave the UK go to Denmark, uh, that's going to take about three days, and get a ferry over to the Faroe Islands, which are halfway between Scotland and Iceland. Um, I think they're a chain of 18, I think 18 islands, and they are they're just they're phenomenal. The landscapes are insane. There's all sorts of stuff going on there that's just, it takes you back in time, or it takes you to another place, or it gives you Norwegian, Nordic vibes, or it gives you Scottish and Celtic vibes. This chain of islands is phenomenal. Nice. So I'm going to go there and then to Iceland, and then back um, back to Denmark and drive over to Norway and all the way up here. This photo that you're looking at on the screen now is Senja, which is in Norway, which is way up the top. Um, it's it's got to be a good 200 or so miles beyond the arctic circle the arctic mm. circle being 66 degrees north 66 degrees 33 minutes um just in case anyone gets picnicity i think is the word um these mountains here um are quite iconic um and quite 
what's the word i want to use they're, they're normal norwegian mountains but in in norway this normal that they have is spectacular to people mm. like you and i where something like that isn't something we see every day and having the northern lights dancing above it is is a yeah, spectacular okay. sight um so that's norway but i'm going to show you another picture as well of iceland <clears throat> which is right here. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is the mountain shaped like an arrowhead. Mm. And if, you, if you're if you reading it off a map, it's Kirkjafell, Kirkjafell, which is Church Hill. Um, and the, the waterfall is Kirkjafell's Foss, Foss being waterfall in Iceland, which is a good tip. If you see anything on an Icelandic map or your Icelandic sat-nav GPS device that says Foss, it means it's a waterfall. Beautiful. So I, I, to be able to get the van to these places, shoot the northern lights explore the landscapes and see everything there is being self-sufficient creating my own energy having everything i need right here and being able to I, I mean i could park up right there and just wait for this to happen this is what it's all about for me this is the reason i've done it and being restricted by the covid travel restrictions and social restrictions that have um, come with that kind of inspired the, you to do all this right? exactly so you know when you're looking at instagram or any social media and you see the people in the van with you see the blanket and the doors open on the beach and the mountains or whatever it is out the door that's been something that's been in my head for a good four or five years and i've thought i want to do that i want to do it and it's always just it's just been a thought i want to do it and then that's it i've never done anything about it right and, and then I... having this having this reason to do it has it's been awesome all this testing awesome as well i nice. can't wait to get up there and uh steven there's a comment from steven and then i have a question so okay uh, steven says uh that u.s rainbow canyon nicknamed star wars canyon and jedi transition is a canyon inside canyon. death valley national park in inyo county california on the park's western border okay so basically steven what before <laughs> I, what Stephen just did there is correct every single thing I said except Star Wars. So it's Star Wars <laughs> Canyon and I said Valley. It's California and I said Arizona. But yeah, so there's, I knew someone would know those. Stephen's a very knowledgeable guy. So thank you, Stephen. Star Wars Canyon, if you want cool. to shoot planes in the States. And uh, my question is, is uh, and you, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but... Um, I, I just think it should be happening. Um, okay. Are you getting sponsorship for this adventure? I would hope that. I, uh, I'm not. Uh, okay. So I don't know how to tactfully answer this. Right. I have, I work with companies that kind of sponsor me in a way in that they give me product. And when I give them content, they give me money. That's sponsorship though. Right. But anyway, I have right. a few companies that I do that for. I make sure none of them conflict. So there's um, only one of each kind of sure. product. Um, but in terms of the van and the trip, I'm currently working on a plan for sponsorship for the actual due north, the van, everything like that. Um, I think and that's there, is, what I was there is there, there is some there is some progress um, with a few players. That's cool. Um, and it's been very good. And if you look at my Instagram, you can see two of the companies um, that are pushing towards being sponsors. We just need to work out all the details and work out what each party gets and, you know, the, the fun business stuff. Um, but essentially, essentially, there's we're on the cusp of having sponsors for the adventure. Great. I just need to work out the details. <laughs> yeah. I, I was hoping that you would, so that's why yeah. I, I, just, I wasn't trying to you know, pry personally. When, I was just... No, that's fine. So when one of the things I've learned, having so I've been shooting since I was about 14, um, and it's been a hobby, and it's been on and off. It was on and off through my teens, and then when I hit about 25, I started to take things really seriously. I'm now 36. Um, and seriously, in terms of progressing the hobby and learning how to do everything and stuff like that. When I turned about 28, 29, that's when I decided I want to make money from this because I want to buy new gear, figured out what it is that I want to do and how I want to do it. And it's taken me until about four years ago, three years ago to really focus hard on it. It's travel photography. It's the cold, it's Northern lights and it's education. And that's, that's what it is that I do. And, all of that experience um, 
is all about creativity. All of all of all of the processes that have gone on behind figuring out that I did weddings and I don't like them, so I stopped. I did events and I don't like them, so I stopped. And everything that made me arrive here at travel photography was all fun and creative and exciting and it was all about compositions and learning about um apertures and how depth of field works and how light works and how to see light and read light and all that stuff it was all great fun and then when i started making money i realized that that was about 10 percent of what actually happens and the other 90 percent is boring it's money and planning and um of marketing and there's all these things that, that make you need uh, that you need to do to succeed as a photographer in business that have nothing to do with photography whatsoever and um it, it, it's that that goes hand in hand with the sponsorship and stuff like that i i i for the creative side of things i want to work with the companies that i know and trust and whose gear i already use and then the business side and the contracts and the money and everything else just really is a, such a turn off. It's horrible. It's it's too bad. <laughs> and it's the yeah. biggest the biggest that's, thing in, in going pro in photography is that is boring. I was gonna say, <laughs> I mean, that's life, but it's too bad yeah. that that's such a big part of what we do because, um, you know, I went to school for fine art and then I was, you know, living in say Brooklyn and New York and mm -hmm. trying to. Um, you know, I worked for some galleries and I worked for some artists and then trying to get into my own shows. And I realized that you had to spend a lot of energy and time, you know, writing for, to get grants and yeah. trying to get into galleries and this, yeah. a lot of, it was a lot of work. And so, yeah. So your, how, your thing was the, your thing was the art, the fine art, but right. everything that you had to do to do the fine art, if that's the right verb right. to you, do the fine, anyway, um, was all, writing and contacting and marketing and networking and all that that had absolutely nothing to actually do with fine art itself it's the same isn't it in photography right so then i took classes at school of visual arts fell in love with photoshop and that opened me up to a whole new world so yeah and now you're the guy with the cushions and the guru award and so That's it all right. paid off <laughs> <laughs> blue background blue backgrounds yeah awesome <laughs> cool um, so you had a donkey friend for a while. I, <laughs> so I was, um, I went to the new forest. I, I had a, this is one of the days where I decided I need a campsite to, you know, deal with the black waste and all that sort of stuff, Wonky the black, donkey. the black water. And so, um, I was down in the new forest near the South coast of the UK cool. and I, I parked up, got my laptop out, sat in my nice spinny, spinny chair in the front there. And the next thing I know, the van was just surrounded by donkeys. They roam. Wow. They're, I don't know, they can't possibly be wild, but, you know, they roam the, the national park, horses and cows as well. So the next photo was a cow that was um, just, you see the van, see, see the van there hiding? Yeah. See what I mean about the color of it? So if it's in a photo, it, it's in it on purpose. Otherwise, it sort of blends in. Yeah, you don't want it to stick out like <laughs> bright red or something. Yeah. Exactly. Looks nice. Yeah, cool. So yeah. how many donkeys showed up? Was it? Oh, 20 lots of donkeys the van was surrounded and when i wanted to leave they would not move <laughs> so it was quite awkward yeah <laughs> it's all part of the fun of um part of planning and preparation like this was part of it as well this it's only small but this screw was in the tire but you can see how chunky and meaty these tires are and they're not going to take anything so that right that was no no match at all that screw it did no damage i just unscrewed it and it came back out Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work going into making sure this van is ready. A lot of work going into making sure it's ready. Um, I have a, um, a member of the family um, who is right here, who is the greatest mechanic in the world. He is my absolute hero, and he's been helping me with the things that I'm not sure about. So this is the garage he works at, and we had the van up on, um, what is that, on the lift to get underneath right. to make sure. There we go. To make sure everything was the way it should be, that there was no rust, that all the brake pipes were clean and, and working effectively. I mean, there's so much work going on here to make this happen. This this is part of the thing as well, like the creativity versus the business. Well, this is the business of van life. <laughs> it's all these boring things like checking brake pipes that go on to make sure that when you actually get there, when you need the brakes, that they work properly. 
Right. I mean, you got to take all that time to be thorough or else, you know, you could find yourself in a pretty bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. And we've learned from the snow recovery experience that we don't want bad situations. (laughs) Most, most places that you go to at nighttime, does it cool off? So then if it's summertime, you're not too, too hot for the insulation, right? I mean, yeah. So I have, as you can see, I've got enough big holes to open like the side door, the back doors and the front, and then each of the windows opens as well. Um, it windows open rather as well. So there's, if it gets hot in the van, I just open everything and turn the fans on and it's fine. Sure. Um, it's, it's not really a problem. Um, do you, and do you have a, um, a stick or a baseball bat in case any weirdos <laughs> come by or anything? What do I have? So obviously our laws are very different to American laws. And I don't know about, obviously we don't have guns. Um, right. And there's a there's laws about weapons, and there are even some new ones. I think there's laws about weapons that if something is made as a weapon, it's basically illegal in public. And this is oh. this is not my home. This is sorry, this is not my house. It's not a dwelling, therefore it's public. So I have to be very careful. But you know, I've got an axe back there, which is for chopping firewood, and I've got an ice axe, which is obviously for going on glaciers, and I've got a knife for cutting um, things in the kitchen. Sure. If, if, is that a good enough answer? That's a great answer. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. <laughs> hope, hope, you, hope you're not uh, <laughs> bothered by my questions, right? No, I'm not bothered. I'm just being careful about the answer. But there's the answer. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool. I wonder if anyone's got any questions about the trip or the journey. If anyone's got any questions about photography or business of photography, seeing as we've got onto that as well, please feel free to go ahead and ask. I wonder, no. It's not going to play sound to you, is it? This is the uh, cave at the Black Rock Sands um, that I was parked in front mm. of that you saw just now. It's an awesome place. You see the car on the right there as well? So, yeah, they let people on the beach. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, Part, all this research and planning and preparation um, for the big trip is so much fun. Um, just getting – there's all these places in the UK that I'd never seen before, never heard of before, like that beach, Black Rock Sands. I like the Mac Loop. I didn't think it was so accessible. You could see the planes like that. I thought it must be in a military area that no one's allowed anywhere near. Um, and that goes to travel photography as well, because travel photography is not about going places. Although, obviously, what I'm doing is going going places. But travel photography is not about going places, but it's about making the person looking at the picture want to be there. And so for you as the photographer, if you're into the travel photography, you don't actually go, need to go anywhere. You don't need to go very far at all because if you step out your front door and look around your nearest town or your nearest um, your nearest nature area, whatever it may be, and you take the photo that makes somebody want to visit that area, they want want to be there in the photo because of the way you've taken it or the, the way the light hits, whatever it is that's in the picture, or the way you comp- compose it in such a way that you make somebody feel like they're in the photo that's travel photography. And so I don't need to go to Norway. I am going to Norway, but I don't need to go to Norway to do travel photography. I can do it on my doorstep, which is, if you're into travel photography, it's a great thing to think about because a lot of people think I can't do that. It's so expensive or whatever it may be that's putting them off or I can't travel because I've got these commitments at home. Well, shoot the things near the near your home and get the same message across in your photos that's travel photography that's how it's different from every other genre because landscape photography is landscapes food is food on a plate portraits of people but travel photography doesn't have that thing it doesn't have that defining subject it has the result the feeling um that comes from it so the result of travel photography is what makes it travel photography and that's what makes it different and unique from any other genre of photography so there take that one with you um yeah Travel photography is completely different, but it's so funny. You don't actually need to travel. Yeah. Bob says, uh, great point. Just make someone want to be there. You know? Yeah, exactly. Make somebody want to be there in that place. It's, it, you can you can try and evoke the other senses, perhaps through your toning or your color or what's in the photo. You can evoke the other senses, like um, you can hear the sea or you can smell the food, whatever it may be. If you can get that through in your photography based on the way you process it and the way you take it 
you've done a great job as a travel photographer because there's someone looking at that photo is going to want to be there. If I show you this photo of the van parked at a gate in cold, wet weather, does it make you feel like it's cold and wet? Do you feel yeah. that yeah. feeling? And then it succeeded. I mean, it's a terrible travel photo. I don't, it doesn't, no one should put that in a brochure because you shouldn't want to go there, but it's done its job as a travel photo because it's, I've, it gives, I've gives you a real feel of the moment. Yeah. yeah. Having the lights glaring at you, having the gray behind that's really dismal, and then having I've upped the clarity so that there's so many reflections so you can see just how wet it is. That's that's travel. That's what travel photography is. Um, nice. Yeah, different. Excellent. <laughs> cool. So, any other uh, questions? Anybody? Just taking it in. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Stephen <laughs> says it to helps to tell the total story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, when uh, when you have a, a travel photo, you want to try and tell that because quite often, when it goes in a magazine or when it goes in a brochure or on a flight or airlines website, whatever it may be, everything needs to come across in that one thing. You can do a series, you can do a, a travel series, of course, but nice. you need to get as much through to the viewer in one photo as you possibly can. Um, right. So yeah, excellent. Like, so, um, so I wanted to remind everyone that uh, you can find Dave on all the social networks at, at Dave Williams. And at Dave, I Dave Williams. Yeah, that's it. I Dave Williams.com. Yeah. So yeah. I Dave Williams dot com and then I Dave Williams on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and because I am catching up TikTok. Uh oh. <laughs> Start dancing. Okay. Two videos. There's two videos. But Start I mean um, <laughs> I do them. anyway, yeah. And then uh don't forget that on Instagram you can also search for I'll let you say it. If you go to iDev Williams, coffee. if you if you look at the description, it says driver of Coffee Fern Vey, and you can just click on that coffee and it'll fern. take you straight to the van. Correct. If you really want, you can see all my behind the scenes because this is where all the nice photos. You can see all the behind the scenes stuff that I get up to at Mr. Dave cool. Williams. Nice. Excellent. So there you go. Perfect. Let's see a couple of uh, last comments. All right, so uh, Tracy says thank you. Thank you. And Bob says very interesting. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for the questions. Great. And uh, just to remind everyone that, as usual, I will be uploading these to the Facebook groups, the recording, and uh, sharing it with Dave so he can, uh, or I, Dave, so sharing it with <laughs> I, Dave, so he can post I it. I am now Dave. officially an Apple product. And the tic <laughs> TikTok, I, Dave, dancing. I, Dave, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, yeah, the link to the recording will be shared in all the various groups and on my Facebook business page. And uh, for sure, as this evolves, um, we might have to schedule a live one. So maybe yeah, we'll I was just I was going to say to so in in December when I'm up here somewhere around Lapland, top of Norway, Sweden, Finland, somewhere there. If you want, I can yeah. dial back in and we can see what's happened. See if the van's still in one piece. Yeah, maybe you can do a live one with a video. You can kind of pan yeah. around and yeah, sounds cool. good to me. Excellent. So yeah, um, and if you are interested in seeing the YouTube, it's not up and running yet, but it will be soon. It will be called Due North, which will be on a channel which will be called I Dave Williams. But obviously, if you follow my Facebook and stuff, you'll see it there. So if you're interested in seeing right. where this thing goes and whether I survive, that's where you'll find it. Excellent. So, yep, find Dave on all social networks as I Dave Williams. Thanks so much, Dave. It was great. And thanks, uh, Andrew, for having me. Thanks, everyone, for yeah. dropping in as well. Thanks for everyone in the chat and all the good questions. Yeah. And so in December, we'll do a, a live a live event where you're right in the midst of it all. So, yeah. Cool. Excellent. It may or may not look something like that image with the cow, with me standing there <laughs> with a coffee, feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I right, will thank you so much for this. This was great. And uh, thanks, thanks for, everyone for watching. And yes, I will post the links to the recordings and, uh, you know, rewatch it this weekend. So thanks everybody and have a great uh, weekend.